All right, everybody, we are back for another weekly Wednesday live Q&A, and we are in for a great treat today. Uh, we have some really cool questions and a really great topic, in my opinion. Uh, so as usual, you know, we cover topics on a different range of bodybuilding from supplementation, training, dieting, uh, everything of the above. Uh, but today, we're going to talk about the unspoken aspects of contest prep. Uh, so this video may not be the sexiest video to some people, uh, but we're going to cover the big hitters, um, things like you know binge eating, sex drive, tiredness, irritability, hunger, sleep. Uh, we're going to cover all of those uh, in today's video. Uh, so we're going to get right to it. I did have uh, some things that I just named. I, of course, I did have some people ask me to cover specific topics, and they had specific questions or comments that they wanted me to touch on. Uh, but as always, guys, it is 6 p.m., and we are going to start uh, rolling in with the questions that came in on Facebook. I see everybody's tuning in here live on Facebook, and then we are also going to replay this on my SoundCloud, and it will be live on my YouTube page. So here we go, guys. Uh, Bronwyn kind of let us off. Uh, she's kind of setting the tone for us uh, as far as the questions go. And I got, I'll, I'll read Bronwyn's question and we'll get to it. Um, what are the, some of the bad things that can happen to the body during prep? Uh, what can be avoided and what can't? Most things uh, that are caused specifically due to dropping body fat and putting your body through this stage. So, Brown, that's actually everything that we're going to cover in today's video. Um, so, I'm going to break down a little, a little bit more specific topics. Um, but Ben started us started us off with kind of some more specific topics, and he said, as a husband, father, or just having a significant other, uh, what are your thoughts uh, slash things that remind yourself? to not be irritable around them. Now, Ben, that is a tough one. Um, as many of you know, I am, I guess, semi-recently married. I believe I've been married for about eight months now. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, and I've been dieting for a good portion of those months uh, just because, like, I dieted down for my wedding. My wife and I actually did not live together before we got married, um, and now we live together, obviously. Um, so now she is, this is going to be the first time she is living with me while I'm dieting. And it's tough, you know, because um, sometimes I am cranky. Absol absolutely. Sometimes I have a very short temper. Um, I will admit that. Um, but what you do have to realize is the first and foremost is that we choose to do this to ourselves. Um, so that's one thing that I do have to keep in the back of my mind is that you know I'm choosing to be in a caloric deficit, I'm choosing to compete in bodybuilding, not necessarily the easiest sport um, in the world. You know, it's, it's a lot more mentally taxing and physically taxing than a lot of other sports. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's my, my personal choice. Now, uh, one thing, and I think we're gonna get this uh, in Jeff's question kind of later on, but I do wanna bring it up now. Um, one thing that sets, sets a lot of us off uh, during contest prep is food. And one thing, and I just got done doing it uh, sh just a little bit while ago. I mean, I literally just ate like five minutes ago. Um, but my wife came home from work and she's like, I'm hungry now. Like, I want to eat. So what I've been doing, and this is just me personally, um, is instead of like avoiding my wife like when she's eating, like I'll literally sit down at the kitchen table with her and just talk to her like when she's eating dinner. And then she does the same for me if we're not on the same schedule. So it's just kind of like... Still going about our normal daily activities, um, even though like obviously like I'm not necessarily eating the same things as her. Some days I do, some days I don't. Today we didn't. You know, we ate at different times, but I'm still participating. You know, actively participating, I should say, within like my role as a husband. You know, asking her about her day. You know, talking about whatever else she's got going on. Um, so that's that's just one of the strategies that I've been using as far as like having kids. I can't. I can't speak for that one since I don't have kids. I can only assume that that would be even tougher, uh, just because kids just tend not to understand. You know, they only know like you know why. You know, how come Daddy doesn't want to go play with me or anything? And like I said, I don't have kids. Um, you know, somebody else could maybe chime in on that in the thread. Um, but uh, like my wife, she definitely understands. You know, I don't necessarily need to. What's up, Terrence? I see you, buddy. Um, I don't necessarily need to tell my wife like. 
you know, listen, like, I'm tired today. Like, she, she can tell, you know, but, like, for a kid, um, you just have to suck it up. You know, you have to be a dad first, and, you know, bodybuilding is always going to come second. Um, yeah, Jeff said, yeah, my three... Uh, my three is accountable, my accountability partner. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So Jeff's kids uh, keep them on track, which is even cooler, you know, if they uh, if they know what you're doing. Now, uh, Ben also went on to ask, uh, to what extent does sex drive, sex drive or lack thereof, hit the relationship? Uh, so that that is a tough one. I mean, I guess it depends on the individual too. And this is a tough one. Like, let's be honest, guys. Uh, for males out there, you know, I'm a young man. Like. It hasn't necessarily hit me yet. Maybe it's starting to slightly. But by the time a contest prep, be, so when a contest prep begins to when it ends, like my testosterone is obviously that of an average, you know, 26 year old male, pretty high. By the time a contest prep ends, like it's going to be that of like a 60 some or 70 some year old male. I didn't get my testosterone level checked before. I probably won't get it checked after. And honest God, I probably actually don't want to know because it'll just make me feel worse <laughs> than I probably actually do. Um, so I'm going to avoid that, even though it's nice. It's sometimes nice to have data, but that data is just going to make me feel bad. So yeah, I mean, sex drive can definitely uh, negatively affect a relationship, but obviously, you know, like my wife is going to have to understand, um, you know, by the time like, Sept, you know, September, October, November roll around, like, you know, my test is going to be super low, you know, so I, I can't necessarily say like how it's going to affect it. Um, but I, I mean, I feel like a lot of people just end up not, um, not being too aroused by the end of prep. Um, but that's something that will come back. Um, and then we'll actually get to that in Jeff's question about the rebound of hormones later on. Um, and then Ben also asked, uh, what are the relative views on food focus and lack of energy? So I kind of touched on food focus a little bit in my first one when I said about how I just like literally sit down with my wife, um, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes whenever she's eating, like it doesn't take her long to eat. But, you know, me kind of getting away from the food focus and mean, being able to sit down and just have a conversation with her and not have to be like in a different room when she's eating. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's one thing that I've been shifting for food focus. As far as lack of energy, you know, it definitely hasn't hit me yet as far as the energy goes. Maybe after like a super duper long day, a uh, hard training session, like I did tell her the other night that, oh man, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired, you know, more than usual. Um, I did see a big drop in weight uh, the next day. So that probably had something to do with it as well. Um, I might've just overextended myself a little bit too much. Um, as far as like lack of energy goes, you know, views on it, like, yeah, energy is going to go down. But once again, I feel like a lot of it is, is mental. Um, there's actually some like more sciencey things that we're going to get into a little bit later. Um, but my word of advice, cause this is more so along relationships, like don't let the bodybuilding, don't let the deficit like affect, you know, I, I'm going to try like, like hell for it not to affect like my relationship with my wife or just like the daily conversations that we have or like how I treat her in general. Uh, even if I am lower energy, like I probably will be a little bit cranky and she understands that. Um, but that's something that I, I definitely want to work on over the course of this contest prep considering this is the first time that we've lived together um, when I'm competing. Now, obviously, like this is the season of all seasons for me. Um, so I'm going to try not to have it negatively affect our relationship. And honestly, God, I really don't think it will. Okay. Uh, James wanted to talk about sleep. Uh, he said, sleeplessness. Are there any supplements uh, that can help put me to sleep? So it was funny because Ben, the guy that just asked the previous question, uh, he actually recommended Core Z's, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny because Ben is not necessarily affiliated with Core, but he knows that I am. So Ben, I appreciate the humor in that. Um, but yeah, definitely Core Z's. But let's talk more specifically about why sleep suffers during prep. Uh, so there's a few things uh, that I want to talk about, and once again, this might, uh, so these are some things that I necessarily didn't think of um, until I started, uh, you know, researching a little bit today, and once again, guys, I always like to talk in terms that people can understand. Um, oh, yeah, one of my guys just said, <laughs> that was a very nice comment, Terrence, yeah, we, Terrence just kind of, he said it in the comments, but my wife and I have been together since high school, so she's put up with my shit for a long time. Uh, we just haven't lived together uh, during a contest prep. But yeah, I don't think 10 years of a relationship will uh, will falter 
from me dieting for a handful of months. So I think I'll, I'll be just okay. <laughs> um, anyway, we're talking about sleep. And uh, Ben actually just missed your questions, but let's, uh, let's cover sleep now. So one of the main things with sleep um, we, we tend to sleep better, you know, when we're fed. A lot of a lot of people know that when we're in a caloric deficit, uh, we tend not to sleep as well. But let's talk about why, uh, because I feel like that's where a lot of people just don't make um, make the connection. So let's let's talk about what we're doing during contest prep that may make our sleep worse. Besides being in a caloric deficit, let's let's just throw that one out the window right now. Um, typically, we drink a lot more water during contest prep, so. I know this is just me personally, like come four o'clock in the morning, come 4.30, like I'm getting up and I'm going to the bathroom. On some nights, I can go back to sleep and on other nights, I cannot go back to sleep. So obviously, a higher water consumption has a negative impact upon my sleep. In my off season, sometimes I get up during the middle of the night, other times I don't, but definitely during contest prep, my water is probably higher than it is in the off season just because I'm trying to keep myself a little bit more full. We did talk about that during our hunger episode a few weeks back, is that you know water may stretch your stomach, but it's not necessarily going to help you um, in the long run, right? But I still drink a lot of water. I mean, right now, like I'm on my, I drink like a gallon and a half today so far. I'm definitely not going to get to two gallons, um, but I'll, I'll get semi-close. Um, so my water consumption is high. That's going to negatively affect my sleep. Um, another thing uh, that we when we're in contest prep is that most of us tend to take more stimulants. So we talked about feeling more run down and what, what is one way to counteract feeling more run down? Higher stimulants. So people take more caffeine in the course of the day, whether that's from pre-workout, whether that's from coffee, whether that's from energy drinks, whether that's from fat burners. I mean, those are the main four. So depending on the time of the day that we have our caffeine, uh, caffeine has about a half-life of about six hours, I believe. Um, so depending on what time you're going to bed, if you're taking caffeine too late in the day, once again, that can have a negative impact upon your sleep. Now, I feel like a lot of people, uh, they know not to take a high stim pre-workout before they go to bed or anything. Um, but even little things uh, like having uh, you know, a certain amount of chocolate like before you go to bed or you know, tea or whatever, like things that we may not think about that have caffeine can actually keep us up at night as well. Um, Tommy also asked, since we're talking about sleep, uh, do we plan my last meal? Uh, do you plan your last meal before bed? I, I plan all my meals. Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely plan every single meal that I eat throughout the day. Um, another thing uh, that influences sleep um, is definitely our stress. So we talked about um, in the past, and I guess we'll touch on it now. So obviously I said like at the beginning of this, contest prep um, is not easy, right? It's not, it's not easy physically, it's not easy mentally. So that puts on more stress to us, right? And when we are in a higher stress situation, um, our cortisol levels come up, and this is, Karen was gonna get to this one, but I'll touch on it now. So when our cortisol uh, levels are elevated, our sleep suffers. So we're, when we're under a lot more stress, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a contest prep. You know, we could be, um, you know, let's say like we're under the crunch for, for our jobs, like we need to meet a deadline, we have a big test coming up, and that's elevated stress levels. And if your cortisol levels are up, your sleep may also suffer. So kind of all these things are reasons why our sleep tends to suffer during contest prep. Um, so it's the caffeine, uh, it's the higher stress, and then I didn't mention this one yet, guys, and I feel like, you know, it may sound funny uh, to some people who haven't gone through a contest prep yet, but dude, like, the nightmares are scary. Like, I'm I'm already kind of a guy who has, like, acid trippy nightmares, as it is, um, but in contest prep, they are magnified, and like, I and I feel like it's fairly common, at least for competitors, like, I've heard ones where it's like you, uh, you know, you you forget your tan and you're on stage, or like you're fat as shit, and you you you're on stage in your suit. Like one that I've gotten before um, is like I'm on stage and I'm in my shirt, and or I'm in like a few shirts, and I cannot take my clothes off. And I know that sounds like super weird, 
But, like, I'm literally freaking out because, like, I'm trying to peel off, like, ten layers of clothes because I'm on stage or, like, I'm about to get on stage and I know that I have clothes on but I can't take them off. Like, I have one more, one more, one more layer. And, I mean, that's, like, a super common one for me during prep and I absolutely hate it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, the nightmares, just because you're thinking about so much and, like, you, you put so much pressure on yourself um, during a contest prep. Like, for me, I mean, I know I have, like, these lofty goals, you know, obviously of, like, doing extremely well and a couple of uh, world championships this year. Like, that's the main goal. And I try not to think about that too much um, just because that probably um, will expound my, my nightmares. <laughs> and James said he's never had a nightmare. James, dude, I feel for you. Like, I don't wish it upon anybody. They are absolutely terrible. Um, but that is kind of, like, my take on sleep and why it suffers during prep um, that is minus the caloric deficit uh, but remember it's it's stress it's the higher caffeine um, it's the nightmares and it's the amount of water too those all can play a factor on uh, on our poor sleep all right now Karen uh, asked a few questions here or more or less topics that she wanted me to cover so I did already talk about sex drive to kind of lead off our conversation today um, and then she, the next one that she wanted to talk about um, is GI system effects. So what she's talking about is basically bowel movements, to be blunt about it. And that is definitely something that changes as we diet. Whether this is too much information or not, I really don't care, but I'm going to give my personal take on it. Obviously, when we are in an off-season, we are eating a lot of food. And with a lot of food... Become, comes a lot of waste. I mean, there's no other way of saying it. Um, so you're obviously going to the bathroom a lot more and a lot more frequently when we are in a contest prep. Obviously, we're dialing back our food. And the less food that we eat, the less waste, technically, that we're going to have. So you end up going less and less frequently. Coming from me firsthand, in the off season, sometimes in the morning, I go to the bathroom like two or three times before leaving the house. Now that I'm in contest prep and that I am restricting my foods, I may go, I, I go once before I go, before I leave the house in the morning, no matter what. But here's the thing. If you get um, in the deep, 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 and Karen's getting to it right now. She just said constipation on the comments. When you get deep into prep and your calories get very low, and you're, first of all, your body's trying to absorb everything that you're putting into it because essentially you know, you're kind of starving yourself in a way and it's desperate for calories. So one, it's, it's trying to be as efficient as possible to absorb everything. And secondly, the food's just not there like to excrete, right? Um, one other thing that Karen mentioned is fiber content. Now, as I said in the off season, we eat more calories. And with higher calories come usually higher fiber sources. So if we're eating things that are, I mean, you can eat like a ton of vegetables and just not get a whole hell of a lot of fiber. Like, I can eat a, a couple packs of oatmeal and, you know, get a lot of fiber in. Uh, but the thing is, is that no one's eating packs of oatmeal at the tail end of their contest prep. Like, it's just too dense, too high in carb. So a lot of people just don't get enough fiber in. And that's another reason why you could become constipated, because you could get constipated two ways. You could either have way too much fiber where it, you know, it backs you up, or you could eat way too too little fiber and once again uh, if that's not helping you move through the system uh, then it's just it's not going to help you out uh, it's not going to help you go to the bathroom and once again this might be too much information it is what it is I'm just trying to be honest with you guys and put some things into perspective I remember a time uh, during contest prep where I didn't I didn't have a bowel movement I mean I, I urinated but I don't think I had a bowel movement in like two or three days and I was like really concerned um, and it kind of messes with your head because when you're used to going, like I said, like two or three times in the morning or off season, 
and then all of a sudden you're not even going like once a day or you're not going for a few days at a time you're like what's wrong with me like where's all the food going um, and it is kind of scary and it messes with your head a little bit uh, so that is like the GI aspect of what's going on during contest prep and remember like part of it is um, you know your body's just trying to absorb everything and part of it also is is just sometimes the fiber content just isn't there um, and let's be honest guys like as bodybuilders <laughs> You know, we think that we eat like a balanced diet, but, you know, a normal person just doesn't eat, you know, all kind of, all kinds of protein that we do. You know, we eat an exorbitant amount of protein and sometimes that just doesn't, the, the quantity just doesn't move through us the way that we would expect it to. Because at the end of a contest prep, like a lot of us are just eating like essentially just like a ton of protein and you know not a lot of other things comparatively to what we do um, in the in the off season. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's just definitely something to keep uh, keep in mind. And once again, you know this is this is not necessarily the sexiest topic to talk about is bowel movements. Um, but after all, this is what I wanted this video to be about was the things that never get brought up. And you know I you heard it first. Like I didn't go to the bathroom for you know, two to four days, I remember, and, you know, no one's going to tell you that uh, to your face, but here here we are, we're talking about it. <laughs> All right, um, Karen also, and Karen had a, a lot of great questions here, a lot of topics that she wanted me to touch on, um, so I'm just going to keep rolling with Karen's Karen's topics, um, and what was even better, and I'll just kind of pause here for a sec before I go to the next one, is I didn't know the answers or the mechanisms to all the topics that Karen brought up, uh, which is one of the reasons, once again, why I really like to do these videos is because it makes me a better coach. It keeps my brain going, even in contest prep. Uh, we're talking about cognitive function. Doing these videos, uh, working with so many clients, like it keeps me on my toes, honest to God. And I feel like this contest prep is gonna be unlike any of the other ones uh, just because of my responsibilities and what I'm trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not just sitting there thinking about my own contest prep. You know, I work with you know, a lot of athletes by now. I'm doing these videos. I try to be as active on social media as possible. So I think that's actually one of the things that's going to help me in my current contest prep, keep my cognitive function up, is just, you know, doing things like this. So let's dive right into another one of Karen's uh, topics. And she wanted me to talk about uh, metabolic damage. And then Ben, once again, Ben kind of hangs out in these videos as well. He's probably here right now. I know Karen is. Uh, ben also kind of underneath that said that he likes to refer to it as uh, metabolic adaptations. And I get that. So I like Ben's perspective as well, but I know where Karen's coming from because metabolic damage is oh, just kind of a buzzword that gets thrown around. And I actually commented buzzword underneath that, kind of uh, poking fun at her a little bit. Um, but I do like Ben's perspective of metabolic adaptations. So let's stick with that right now uh, as far as metabolic adaptations. Now, the body's, I will start with this, the body's main function at our root cause or nature or whatever is to stay alive, okay? So let's remember that when we're talking about contest prep Let's remember when we're talking about metabolic adaptations. So our body's main function is to find a way to stay alive. And what we're talking about right now is essentially slowly starving ourselves so we could look good on stage. And I know that sounds funny to some people, but that's what we do. Essentially, you know, breaking it down, that's what we do. Um, I mean, I love it. You know, I'm talking about it all the time. But that's 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 the that's the nature of our sport. That's the nature of our game. Um, and our body doesn't necessarily appreciate what we're trying to do to it. So metabolic adaptations. Let's dive into that a little bit more. So we already talked about like cortisol and sleep, um, and I'm going to tie Karen's um, other aspects in here in a second. Uh, she wanted to talk about uh, T3, T4, <clears throat> we talked about cortisol already, and FSH, um, which is a falside um, hormone uh, that's in both men and women, which kind of influences uh, basically women's periods, 
um, and fertility in both both males and females. So I want to wrap all of these um, into metabolic adaptations uh, and metabolic damage. But I want to focus on the adaptions overall because I think it's going to paint a little bit better picture if I talk about them all at once. Now, this is going to be a lot of information. I'm actually going to have to read a few things because I want to get every, everything right for you guys. Um, I did take some notes, um, but I did find some links that I do want to read from directly. I mean, I know that's not typically what I do, um, but once again, I just wanted to be as spot on as I possibly could uh, with you guys. So let's let's break down... Uh, FSH real quick um, and once again this is one of the things I just wasn't familiar with because typically it's it has to do with women but it's um, it, it is influenced directly by the pituitary gland and in women it basically controls their fertility or essentially if they're gonna have and when they're gonna have a period and men it influences uh, basically the amount of sperm that we can produce now um, as we diet and I said that this is uh, influenced by the pituitary, pituitary function is not as high as it would be in a caloric surplus. So what do we see uh, in women? We see women that sometimes they lose their period or it becomes very irregular. Men, uh, I, I mean, so it's not necessarily easily to tell this for men, uh, but what's very interesting it, and I, I just, I actually learned it this week, and it wasn't even from this video. It was from Core. Not to give another shameless plug from Core, uh, but Doug was actually talking about one of our products, Core Hard, and he said that that actually increases fertility in men because there is a certain ingredient in it. Forgive me for not knowing the particular ingredient. Um, and he said that he actually conceived both of his children when he was on Core Hard, um, but. During contest prep, those mechanisms go the other way. So FSH actually goes down in both males and females. So, and why would that be? Let's talk about that. Um, so if we are in a caloric deficit, I know that this is like really far reaching guys, but I thought it was super interesting and it made a ton of sense to me when I found it out. If we are in a caloric deficit, now let's, let's talk about this in extremes because I feel like it paints a better picture. If there was a terrible, terrible famine and everybody was in a essentially a caloric deficit and a large caloric deficit, which is comparable to what physique athletes are doing to themselves for many months at a time, the body is basically telling yourself it is not a good idea to bring a child into the world right now because essentially there's not a lot of food to sustain a life. I thought that was very interesting, and it made a lot of sense to me. So when, <clears throat> uh, when you're in a, a large caloric deficit, FSH is is not produced as much, so women sometimes lose their periods, and men don't produce enough sperm to potentially conceive a child. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that's just FSH in general. Now. Uh, T3 and T4. Uh, once again, this is something that I wasn't 100% familiar with and I wanted to dive in a little bit deeper. Um, so T3 and T4, um, those are thyroid hormones. So we just, we just got done talking about uh, the pituitary gland. And once again, our hormone function as we get into caloric deficit, it goes down, especially for natural athletes. I guess I did, did not mention that. Um, but as natural athletes, you know, we, we can't supplement, and I'm using air quotes for the people that are, you know, listening back on my, uh, my SoundCloud, we can't supplement our hormones. You know, it is what it is, and we have to deal with it. And that's one thing that we just can't change over the contest prep. We, we can't necessarily influence our hormones. There's other things that we can influence, you know, through supplementation a little bit, um, you know, taking test boosters and having anti-estrogens in us and, and everything. Um, but at the end of the day, those are going to help just a little bit. You know, we can't just keep our hormone function exactly the same as it is in the off season, which is a shame, uh, but that's just kind of the stuff that we deal with. Now, um, how does a thyroid hormone hormones, excuse me, affect body composition and fitness. Now, guys, this is where I do want to read a little excerpt for you guys. Uh, so please stick with me. I feel like it, it, it has a ton of knowledge in it. Um, and it was something that I was actually telling my wife when we were sitting down um, at dinner today, I thought was super, super interesting. All right. 
Uh, so because thyroid hormone regulates uh, metabolic rates, uh, they play a primary role in our ability to achieve a healthy body fat level. So in fact, um, one reason that people often plateau uh, when they lose body fat is that the thyroid responds to caloric deficit uh, by down-regulating function of T3 levels and dropping them, leading to decrease in body temperature so that the body actually burns fewer calories. I thought, I, I was like, phew, mind blown. Um, so why, and I feel like a lot of us get there, I'm right now, I am freezing. Like my hands are always freezing. And today it's 70 degrees outside. Like finally, the weather broke in Chicago and it was 70 degrees. I was super happy. But I am freezing. It's 70 degrees in my house. And so my body, it, it might be starting. And, and this is one of the reasons, uh, you know, when body fat does go down, like it, my body temperature might be changing. My internal body temperature temperature might be changing because of T3. I thought that was pretty cool, honestly. Now, uh, a low thyroid hormone also reduces uh, protein synthesis, lowering muscle repair. So that's huge for us, right? I mean, we talk enough about protein consumption. So when thyroid function goes, that also affects uh, our ability uh, of protein synthesis. So that means like as we go and maybe this is obviously one of the reasons why when we're in a contest prep, you know, you can't, you can't build any more muscle, which is crazy. Um, and that's why you end up losing some muscle too is when you're in contest prep uh, because you just can't straight up, you can't repair it. Um, and, ca and yeah, so it's, it's kind of crazy like when you do get your levels checked um, when you're, you know, during contest prep and after. Um, another aspect is, um, is that uh, low T3 is also associated uh, with low energy levels and a sense of sluggishness and fatigue. So we talked about that, uh, but this is all relevant to thyroid functions, uh, which also makes people feel lazy uh, and, and less active. Uh, and then they, in turn, have a lower uh, activity-related energy expenditure. So it makes you feel lazy. And guys, this is nuts. Like, I mean, I don't mean to sound like a like a, a total uh, nerd about this, but I remember <clears throat> in my last contest prep, like at the very, very end, like the last couple of weeks before I competed, like I was, I didn't feel like doing shit. Like I was just laying on my couch and just, I, you know, I didn't want to move. I was just like watching Netflix and then like watching the clock the next time I could eat, I would go to the gym and I'd answer a few emails. That's when I had less clients. So I legitimately had like nothing to do. Uh, so T3, affects like how active that you want to be, which I thought once again was very inter interesting. And this is all related directly, um, you know, to body composition and fitness. Now, uh, regarding uh, fitness capacity, the low thyroid leads to decrease in cardiac function and impaired oxygen consumption, uh, both of which impede athletic performance. And that makes it critical to athletes um, Obviously, you know, like if, if you can't perform at a high level, you know, we're trying to perform at the highest level possible and it's all regulated by our, th our thyroid. Uh, too much uh, th uh, thyroid hormone obviously is, is bad also and that can cause people, you know, to gain a lot of weight, which I feel like a lot of us don't necessarily have uh, just because, you know, if you have a thyroid, you know, really, really bad problem, um, it could actually, you know, Elev you know, it could elevate your metabolic rate, or I would say it would actually decrease it, and you could gain weight really, really easily. So all those combined, um, but honestly, I thought the most interesting one out, out of all of those uh, was the aspect of actually lowering your body's internal temperature. And I just want to make sure that I got everything in my notes. Um, oh, and also T4 uh, influences uh, digestion and absorption of nutrients. So as those go down, you know, later on in our contest prep, we might not actually be able to digest and absorb nutrients as good as when those levels were higher. Um, and then it also influences uh, the breakdown and storage of not only fat, um, but glucose as well. Um, so as we, which is crazy, and it makes sense, guys, it really does make sense. So at the end um, of our contest prep, as our hormones are taking a turn for the worse, unfortunately, 
Um, our body is essentially trying to keep us alive, like we talked about earlier. So it is trying to prevent the breakdown of fat as much as possible. And then it's also trying to um, help, you know, it's like kind of stalling the breakdown of glucose as well, which is really, really crazy. Um, I know this is like kind of over our heads. And I do try to talk in terms that everybody can understand. Um, but yeah, T3 and T4, uh, our thyroid in general, just have like a, a crazy uh, effect on us. And now let's kind of wrap it um, into uh, the metabolic adaptations. So what, you know, what are we just talking about? You know, we talked about our pituitary and our thyroid glands. Now those probably two have the biggest uh, impact, I would say. Um, I mean, obviously like everything has a purpose, but those are like the major two um, that affect a lot of things within our body. You know, and we just talked about, you know, a lot of them uh, is, you know, it affects, you know, our liver, our kidneys, our internal temperature. Oh, and one other thing, I'm glad I just saw that. Um, so T3, uh, it, it definitely uh, influences our uh, metabolism. But another thing that I've noticed in the past, and once again, I I, I was interested when I, when I saw this and it kind of like light bulbs were just going off on me all day when I was kind of looking at this information. Uh, it actually influences our resting heart rate, believe it or not. So guys, um, when I was in a, when I was in my last contest prep, I, out of curiosity, would check my resting heart rate. Now, I use like a phone application, whatever. Was it the most accurate thing in the world? Probably not, but at least it gave me a rough idea of where my heart rate was. So we just talked about as our hormone levels go down, so T3, T4, uh, as it goes down, our resting heart rate goes down. But why does it go down? Let's dive deep into this. Um, essentially, what our body is trying to do by lowering our resting heart rate it's, and we know like when our heart rate is elevated, let's say like when we're doing hit cardio, our heart rate is through the roof. And when we're just laying around, like our heart rate is lower, but our body seriously lowers our resting heart rate so we don't burn as many calories so we can stay alive. And my wife, and this is why I thought she made a great point today when we were at dinner when I told her this. She said, yeah, remember when we were watching Blue Planet? I don't know if you guys ever watched that show um, on, on BBC, but we watch it frequently. And one of them had to do with like animals hibernating. And they basically can lower their heart rate essentially to only a few beats per minute. And they lower their internal temperature. And my wife brought that up and I was like, son of a bitch, like that's what's going on to us. Like essentially... Our bodies are almost going into like a pseudo hibernation mode. Um, I mean, obviously we like we don't sleep for days or whatever, but obviously it makes us more lazy. It lowers our heart rate. Um, it prevents the breakdown of fat, and that's why that's how these animals do it. That's how these animals stay alive for that that long of time uh, because they essentially uh, their T3 levels are affected, and that's what helps them keep alive, and that's what helps us keep alive as well, even though like at the end of the day, like we are literally trying to do everything in our ability to lose as much fat as possible. Um, and I thought that was insane. And like, luckily my wife is smart enough to connect the dots. Like I totally forgot about that. But I was like, son of a bitch, like there is legitimately nothing we can do in order to fight like this thyroid and, and all of its influence that it has on us. So I know guys like, and Karen, once again, please, if you're still here, thank you uh, for bringing all these topics up. Like it, it blew my mind today. And I'm really glad that we got the chance uh, to talk about uh, thyroid and pituitary function. And you, you guys know me a lot. Like I tend not to get like too sciencey because I feel like a lot of people who are like very, very science driven uh, tend to talk over people's heads when it comes to scientific topics. Hopefully you guys at least got the rough understanding of, of where I'm coming from and the influence um, of hormones in general and prep. So yeah, Karen is still here. She's, <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, let's move on guys. That was a long one. I do appreciate everybody sticking around. Now Lydia said, um, dealing with solitude and self-isolation. And that's, that's a great one, Lydia. And I feel like a lot of people 
feel like, um, well, maybe this for a couple reasons. You know, maybe they just don't want, um, they don't want any outside distractions during their contest prep. I could see that. Um, maybe they feel isolated because they are irritable around other people. Um, you know, maybe they're isolated uh, because, you know, they're just cranky and they don't want to put up with any button shit because they are, you know, in a big caloric deficit and they're always hungry. And not a lot of us, myself included, are not very nice when they're hungry. Um, now, one of what one way to counteract that, I feel like, and I in one of these videos, I lose track of like how many I do because we do this every week. I think this is like episode 24 that I'm doing. I just told my wife that before I got on here. Um, we talked about social media. Now, with social media nowadays, you don't necessarily have to be isolated uh, going through a contest prep. Like, there's li literally thousands of people out there who are dieting right now for shows. And you can outreach to them. So you don't necessarily have to feel like you need to isolate yourself um, when you are in a contest prep. Uh, I mean, shit, guys, I'm in a contest prep right now. Look what I'm doing every Wednesday. <laughs> like, I'm putting myself out there. And once again, like I said earlier in this video, you know, me doing these live videos, uh, me working with so many clients, like, it, it keeps my energy levels up. Like, if you guys can't tell, like, I'm not just sitting here talking like this, you know, just mindless, you know, I'm fired up. You know, I, I enjoy these videos um, and I feel like it definitely keeps my energy levels high. I look forward to these videos. I look forward to going to the gym. I look forward to going to shows. I'm going to shows, you know, basically all year here. Like I'm going to Virginia next week. Um, obviously, that's going to be a little bit of a trip for me, but I love it. Like just because I'm in contest prep. I'm not just gonna hunker down here in Northwest Indiana and be like, I can't go anywhere. Like every single month, I'm going out of town at least two weekends uh, out of the month, if not more. Like my year is already kind of piling up uh, behind me, as you can see my calendar, even though you can't see like the stuff on it. Like I, I have my wife like write down all the shit that she needs. You know, she needs me for like when I'm going out of town and when she's going out of town. Um, and that way we can keep track of everything. So guys, like my calendar is filling up um, and I'm not just going to sit around and do nothing because I'm in a contest prep. You know, I'm going out to, to family dinners, to celebrations. Shit, I just had this past um, this past month um, or in the past three weeks, I went to two birthday parties in Michigan. And, I'm, and I know that if you guys have been keeping up with my progress at all, you know I've been losing some serious weight. I actually saw a new low weight of 183 today. Um, and that's with me going out and, and living my life. You know, you got to live. Um, but also you got to stick to your diet, but you have to find ways uh, to do that without just staying in isolation. And one final thing before I move on as far as like isolation goes, uh, I feel like this is a common sentiment is that like, oh, I'm in contest prep. Like I can't talk to my friends or like I can't go out to eat or like I can't do anything. And like, I just need to focus on myself. And that's like the worst thing in the world because we all know that like when we are in a contest prep, uh, like we play mental games with ourselves. Like it's not necessarily the funnest thing to be inside this head. You know, if you're in a caloric deficit and you don't talk to anybody, like if you're literally just having conversations with yourself in your head and you're thinking about everything, like that's going to be bad for you. Like that's not, there's no good that can come out of that. But what is, what's good that can come out of like me going to Michigan a couple times uh, for birthdays. And these are at restaurants that had no macros. I just literally ate on the fly and I was like, all right, like I'm going to make informed decisions, but I'm going to be there for my friends. Like I'm going to Virginia, like I said, in a couple in uh, next week and Sam and Patrick are going to, I'm going to meet up with them. And they're like, well, you know, are you going to like order any like meals when you're out there like to have with you? And I said, no, fuck it. Like I can eat on the fly and still make progress. I could still go to restaurants and be able to guesstimate to the best of my abilities. Uh, you got to live, right? And like you can't let bodybuilding, um, negatively affect your life. I mean, it already has a huge influence on us as it is. Um, so we can't, you know, we can't let it negatively affect us, guys. All righty. Let's go with Jeff here. I don't know what's going on in his video, but uh, Jeff said, uh, these may be another Q&A, uh, so feel free to skip over them. No way, Jeff. I'm not skipping, man. Uh, but he said, uh, but relating to hormones and metabolism post-show, so keep that in mind. Um, metabolism post show is um, how long does it typically take after a show if done correctly for hormones to return to a normal level? Um, so that is a tough one, Jeff. Um, and let me just adjust this here since it's not so bright. Um, with my thinking on this, and once again, I haven't actually got mine done, 
is that uh, during a contest prep, it typically, I would say like, let's say you diet for six months, it'll take like three months to rebound. Um, so I would say like half the time. Now I know that um, that's not necessarily like, oh, here's the scientific data, but that's more or less what I've seen uh, with myself, with my clients, is that it does take uh, quite a while um, to do that. Um, so I mean, that's kind of a negative, I understand. Um, so really, like it's almost like your contest prep and a half that you may start feeling normal again. That is one thing that I'll actually like mentally keep track of um, when I am post show. Um, so Jeff, I will update you on that and get a little bit better of a time. Um, post show, once again, Jeff said, um, when someone has the chains taken off, how can they dictate between true hunger and thinking they are hungry uh, because they could literally eat whenever they want? Now. Post show is a very tough time for people, and um, I want I do want to talk about some post show blues here coming up. But let's stick with Jeff's questions at least right now. And he said um, about hunger versus just wanting to eat everything in the in the world. Now, post show, I do recommend that people try to stick to a somewhat of a program diet afterwards um, because that can be very beneficial when you are trying to dictate between hunger um you know so let's say somebody is going to weigh in after their shows um, for a certain amount of weeks now obviously you're going to allow them to gain a certain amount of weight um but if that weight jumps up a ton and then they say they're they're really really hungry well that may not mean that they like need that food they might be going over their diet so that's a tough one um, between you know true hunger and just thinking they're hungry and more often than not I will say this is that they're probably just thinking that they're hungry because really when you know think about it this way and this may help when you diet down for that long we talked about everything being suppressed um, and now I know that we didn't talk about like ghrelin and leptin which we've talked about those before so those are other hormones that are going to influence us to be hungry but we also talked about like T3, T4 and our pituitary gland and those influence us um, in other ways. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, so yeah, I mean definitely you're gonna be hungry after prep and some of that is only affected um, by ghrelin and leptin like when we have those, um, we have enough of that ghrelin in our system basically saying that we have enough fat cells. So that's another thing that we didn't necessarily talk about today too, too much. Um, but yeah, you're probably going to be really hungry after a contest prep. <laughs> um, so related to number two, I've seen the athletes with their metabolism must be through the roof and they can't stop eating, uh, but they don't realize the damage it's doing. So yes, um, let's right now, and I know this is going on like almost 50 minutes, guys, and I do appreciate everybody you know, tuning into these videos, but let's talk about post-show blues and let's talk about binge eating. Um, I feel like they go hand in hand, so I want to actually cover those together. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, obviously, like a lot of us ramp each other ourselves up uh, for a show, and we have this big idea in our minds, especially first time competitors, um, that you know this is gonna change our lives, right? We're gonna place high, we're gonna do well, all of our hard work is gonna pay off. Only one person can win a show, only one person can win a class. Um, only one person can walk away with top honors. The odds of you doing that are just not necessarily in our favor. Bodybuilding is a sport where you are going to lose more often than you are going to win. And that is something that not a lot of people want to hear, but it is a very true statement. Knowing that, we cannot put ourselves as first place or bust. Because if we don't get first, we are going to be disappointed. Even if we get second or third in a stacked class, we had in our minds first place or bust. That's not necessarily the attitude because if we do that, that's going to set us up, well, I didn't accomplish my goal, I'm going to eat my feelings. And I feel like a lot of people end up doing that after a show uh, because uh, whatever reason, you know, they, uh, they get disappointed and they're like, well, screw it, I'm just going to eat everything in the world. I've been restricting myself for so many months, I'm just going to eat it all. Now, hand in hand with binge eating, some people... Can control themselves after a show and they have like one nice meal and they go back onto the plan other people may maybe and this is my personal opinion who follow like a more strict diet which is more like let's say like a meal plan like only specific foods they don't do flexible dieting they haven't 
fit anything in and literally months those are the people that I personally see binge eat more uh, at the end of a contest prep uh, versus the people who have been using flexible dieting who have maybe incorporated some of those nice foods uh, that's just my personal opinion but yeah I mean if you see uh, if you find yourself binge eating after a show like you it, I mean it is kind of a mental place that you have to go to you know you have to evaluate you know why you're doing it um, and, and I think that this is uh, kind of ties into Brett's question so let's dive into that one right now uh, Brett asked uh, I'd like to hear my take on uh, psychological aspects cognitive function emotional stability and self-esteem uh, so Brett let me get this one right real quick, um, and I feel like I might have um, covered it before a little bit. I think it was with uh, T3 um, and T4, um, but one of them uh, said it was like basically like how we feel about ourselves, so it's it's directly influencing that. But let's kind of skip over that right now. That's all right, um, and I see that Brett is here. But let's talk about uh, what it was the first thing that Brett asked, cognitive function. As I said earlier in the video, I feel like my cognitive function is still okay. Yes, I do get forgetful. Um, for instance, like I forgot where I put my headphones in the gym today and I was like wandering around and they're like five feet away from me from when I began. Um, so I've noticed little things like that. I forget like when my wife tells me like when, when I need to be out of town or what's coming up, hence everything like I said on the calendar uh, behind me. So yeah, I, I feel like my cognitive function is still pretty high. Um, as you get deeper and deeper in the contest prep, like, you know, it's going to shift. Um, I feel like mine still will be pretty high just because of my general attitude um, and my food will still be relatively high compared to some people's. Let's, you know, just being honest there. Um, emotional stability. Highs and lows, man. Highs and lows. Um, you know, you get into the gym, you feel, you get a pump, you get some half natty lighting, you feel great about yourself. You go home, um, you know, you lose your pump. You know, you're eating low calories, you feel like you look like shit, like the gym line's not there. Some days you look awesome, some days, you know, you don't look awesome. Um, you get people online telling you that you look great, and then you start questioning yourself, like when you look in the mirror in person. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is it is a roller coaster um, of emotions, like, you know, when you're in contest prep. Um, yeah, oh yeah, uh, so Brett just said, like, he's telling his girlfriend that he's got to watch that as well, but... Um, you know, it's tough. It is tough to be a competitor on a solo journey and not have a support system. So, I, like, obviously, like, a lot of guys that are tuning into this and ladies, too, are my friends, are my clients, and we have a support system, like, with, with Team Iron Management and everything. Uh, but if you're flying solo, like, that's rough. That's a rough, uh, it's a rough place to be just, like, in your own head. Um, and then let's talk about self-esteem real quick. Now, uh, this is going to vary from person to person, and I don't want to, I don't know what the correct word is. Maybe cognitive function is going here, guys. I don't, I guess, I guess I don't know what I want to say. I don't want to pigeonhole somebody if that's the correct um, phrase, I'll say. Um, but, and this is kind of sad, like, and like, honest to God, like, you won't even, you don't even know. But. A lot of people in the fitness industry have extremely, extremely low self-esteem, believe it or not. And they hide behind these like false facades. Um, like you see, a, I guess it's a lot more in women. And I, I once again, I don't like want to be sexist or anything. But like these ladies are just like super self-conscious about like putting up pictures of themselves. Like I'm not going to name any names, but like I saw a picture of a lady... Um, she put up like in a bikini the other day and she was like, oh, like, you know, I wouldn't usually post this picture um, because you could see like uh, an underarm roll or like stretch marks on my thigh. And I like had to like get the binoculars out. I'm like, what the fuck is she talking about? Like, I'm like, I can't even tell. And I'm like looking fucking close. And so like the self-esteem uh, and this is like with people who have literally hundreds of thousands of followers can be like the most self-conscious people like they literally have people telling them they look great every single day and they're still very self-conscious uh, maybe they feel like they need to look a certain way and yeah maybe you know bodybuilding maybe necessarily isn't for them if they can't deal with their body issues and that may sound a little bit harsh but like think about what bodybuilding is like we are legitimately evaluated on how we look 
on stage at our most vulnerable. Not only most vulnerable physically, but probably mentally as well and emotionally. Like a lot of people are fucking train wrecks. Like that's why you see like people lose it. You know, like when they lose, like they th I've seen guys throw chairs backstage. You know, you see ladies cry when they don't win. I mean, you see ladies cry when they win, but um, I'm not saying only ladies cry as well, but like um, you just see like a crazy amount of emotions um, from competitors. Like you see guys get in fights. I personally haven't seen that, but I've heard, you know, you see it on the pro stage, like people pushing each other. Um, we're just testy, you know, you're very emotional. Your self-esteem maybe necessarily isn't in the place uh, that it is in the off season. But once again, even in the off season, like, you know, you're fat, you know, let's be honest, like, I'm not saying like everyone's fat in their off season, but like, if you can't be like, happy with yourself in contest prep, you know, you're probably not going to be happy with yourself in your off season either, because you're in your best shape of your life in contest prep. And you know, so if you can't be happy when you're looking good, like, how are you going to feel when you're looking bad? So um, that's definitely something that you have to look internally um, and evaluate, like, you know, why am I feeling this way? Like, do I, do I feel like I need to hold up a certain standard? And I'll tell you my personal opinion about that is, is no, like, I am a professional body, natural bodybuilder. And do I necessarily feel like I look like one all the time? Hell no. Um, does my self-esteem suffer from that? No, because I'm comfortable with the way that I look and I feel like not a lot of people can say that, which is, which is unfortunate. Um, but let's just move on to the very last question. And dude, guys, we're gonna be in this video for a full hour today. I knew this was a great topic. Uh, this variance, you know, the the not talked about topics. So thanks everyone again for tuning in. Uh, but Tommy asked one last question, and it is: Is there a good time or deadline uh, if you would have someone tell uh, basically to hang it up uh, to pick another show? And he throws out there like eight weeks. So that's a tough one, guys. Um, I would say at like the th three to four week mark, you're gonna know like if someone's not gonna make it. Because technically, I mean, if someone's losing like two pounds a week and they're four weeks out, like they could lose eight pounds. Um, eight pounds would do a lot to someone's physique, but you know, that's not a likely scenario. So yeah, I mean, three to four weeks is basically the time where you'd say to, to move on. And hopefully, your coach has already told you that, like going into the show, like, listen, if you're not ready, you know, we're not going to have you compete. And that is, it's unfortunate. And I'll close with this one. This will be literally the last question that we talk about. Um, I've seen coaches just throw people on stage. I've seen coaches throw literally 30 people on stage. And I know that may sound like an exaggeration, but I've seen it happen multiple times. They throw 30 people on stage, basically no matter what they look like, um, whether they're in contest shape or whether they're in their full all season mode, they just have them put on their bikini. They have them put on some board shorts. Um, and I feel like that is crazy. We're talking about bad self-esteem issues. Put a bikini on when you're in full blown, a competition bikini on when you're in full blown off season mode. Then we'll talk about self-esteem issues. Uh, so as always guys, I do appreciate you tuning in. Uh, I hope that you learned a lot. I know I did from this video. Um, in regards to more or less of the, the hormone aspect, um, kind of wrapping it all up. Um, you know, there's nothing that we could really do as natural athletes um, to influence, you know, uh, like our thyroid and like our pituitary gland. You know, there's, there's ways that we could aid in sleep. You know, there's ways that, you know, we could try to fight um, some of our hunger. You know, we talked about that in other episodes. You know, there's mentally, we have to try to be less irritable. You know, sex drive is not necessarily going to be able to be influenced. You know, obviously, if we're taking test boosters, those can aid us some, um, but it's not going to be an end-all, be-all. Uh, so, you know, the takeaway from this video is our body is kind of like trying to fight us along the way. Um, it's not happy with getting to a super-duper low body fat set point because it's trying to stay alive. Um, so just realize, like, your body is, is trying to fight you along the way. And it, it's not going to be easy at some points in time, uh, but just make sure that you first and foremost give yourself enough time, uh, hire yourself you know, a good contest prep coach to kind of point you in the right direction, and they'll you know, have a support system uh, to lead you through the way. Um, but guys, we are like at an hour right now, so I'll cut it there for everyone who's stuck around the whole time. 
you're the real MVP tonight uh, because you stuck around for an hour. Uh, have a great night, guys, and we will be back next Wednesday, same time, same place. See you later.